I'm Michael Katz. I'm a graduate of Parkway Central High School, class of 1981, which seems like yesterday. However, I've been told that it was 25 years ago. They told me that at the high school reunion not too terribly long ago. Um, it's absolutely phenomenal to have this particular honor because I have a 16-year-old going through Parkway North right now who's having um, the year of his life with the undefeated 11-0 Vikings. Um, my, my interesting thing was that I only went to Parkway for one year, and I was born in St. Louis, went to Weber Elementary in the Parkway School District, moved away and came back, and went to the same high school I would have gone to had I never left. One of the most interesting things for me in my senior year was it's, you're either going to have a great time or you're not, but it's your choice, and that's kind of a philosophy that I've taken with me through my Parkway year at uh, Parkway Central. Um, I was asked by Gary Chesley, who was an assistant principal at that time and went on to become principal and other things in the district, uh, to be part of the senior lead leadership after being at Parkway for about a month and a half. I look back on that now and thought that what an innovative idea that was because it asked for a new perspective. It, it was something different. It was students getting involved in how to make Parkway, specifically Central, a better place. And I, I look at that experience as something that I never really thought about until recently, but it's something that before it was fashionable to say, think out of the box, which has become a total cliche, Parkway is thinking out of the box. And I, I think that's a perspective that is there today. And when people ask me all the time, why is your son going to Parkway and not a private school? And I ask them quite sincerely, what makes you think that he's getting something that he, at Parkway that he wouldn't get at a private school? And I truly believe that. For me, the education at Parkway was great. It enabled me to go on to college and law school and, and uh, excel um, at law school, uh, start my own practice eventually. I had been a prosecuting attorney. Um, I'm still in my own practice. I represent people and entities such as the St. Louis Rams, and it provides me a pretty interesting life experience. But also for me, it's something that you end up going and saying that there's something more in life. And it goes back to, to that experience of you either do something or you don't. And I was very blessed to have amazing parents, parents that grew up in St. Louis. And unfortunately, uh, I watched both parents go through chemotherapy at the same time. I was 11 years old when my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, and she never looked back. And she lived life to the ultimate fullest. And her philosophy was just giving unconditionally, no strings attached. It was a philosophy that I took with me and when she died in 95 and my dad unfortunately was going through cancer at the same time, um, you decide what to do. You know, life is going to give you whatever challenges. You can call them problems, you can label them, it's semantics. It's whether it's bad things, you know, versus everything else. You can dwell on those things or you can do something with those things. And, and for me, that wasn't a choice. It was just a lifestyle, a lifestyle that was implanted by my, my parents and my upbringing. So I decided to start a foundation that eventually became the Judy Foundation. It's a foundation that's given over a million dollars back to the St. Louis community to provide mammograms for women who can't afford mammograms. It's something that my mom would have done after she, of course, yelled at me for not making money and taking care of the family. And I said, Mom, it's okay. It's all right. She would have been the ultimate executive director for this particular foundation because it's something that she believed in, which is just giving back. From there, it has uh, spawned numerous events. One is the very large Judy Ride, which is a spinning event. We have a dinner auction dance, which I can name as Dad, and I named that after my father died in 2001. You know, it's a, it's a very interesting experience when you lose both parents at, uh, at a younger age. You know, kids lose parents all the time. One of the greatest advantages, I think, of having a foundation is, is reaching out to people on an individual level. I mean, everybody thinks that if you have a, a foundation that's given back a million dollars that you're not accessible. I think what's really important, uh, and it's a fine line, life is a fine line, but being accessible, being able to reach out to people is very, very important. So when I have the opportunity to reach out to a survivor or somebody who needs a mammogram or the occasional phone call, we need help, and it's not something that the foundation's mission statement calls for, but you go on ahead and reach out under, undercover and, and do what you need to do. Um, I think that's pretty much what d defines success in life. Um, I think life is defined not by a checkbook or a savings account. Life is defined by how well you can sleep. And by giving, you want to go ahead and lead by example and, and give that and share that with, with others. I talk at a survivor breakfast as part of the GD Ride every year. This year we had 178 women 
at a survivor breakfast. We had to turn away 140, which I will do my best to make sure that never happens again and have a larger room. But you, you reach out and you look in the eyes of these survivors, and they're the heroes. I'm not. I'm very fortunate to be in this situation um, because I was smart enough to surround myself with really great people. But, you know, a lot of folks say, well, you're getting in, inducted to a Hall of Fame. What sport did you play? Well, it's not much different than going to Canton and putting a yellow jacket on saying, look, I'm here because I had a team, a team that blocked for me, a team that supported me, a team that made it happen. I just had an idea, and I had a passion and an emotional connection to something. And I was lucky enough to connect to so many other people to enable my vision, my idea, into their dream and their reality to reach out and touch so many people. I think in the end what happens is that there are a lot of people in the, in the state of Missouri and beyond that are receiving help from all these people that make up the Judy Foundation. And uh, they don't know who we are and we don't really know who they are. Um, but the connection, the energy that is created because they exist and we exist, I think is really what defines what the, our foundation is all about. On the lighter side, <laughs> on the lighter side, you know, it's great because I get to connect a lot of my different worlds and different things. You know, if I, if I were asked, I'm a father first. It's one of my, the greatest accomplishment I've ever had was co-founding my son, Zach, with another Parkway graduate. And, um, and we we're developing another Parkway graduate, we hope. And uh, one of the nice things, of course, is, you know, from that, everything else stems from there. You know, you want to give, you want to create a better opportunity. I had wonderful opportunities for my parents. I want to pr provide that from, for my son. Um, but to be able to connect a restaurant that's now in Creve Court in the Parkway School District and have a Parkway night, Parkway North night on a Wednesday is wonderful. Um, to be able to reach back and give to society, again, I think it's defined success. And there's something really, really fulfilling about walking up to somebody, smiling, and knowing that they're smiling on the inside too, just as you are. Last year, about being one of 10 people that are changing the world in St. Louis. And uh, it was a pretty interesting, humbling experience, as all of this is. And they asked me to, to tell them how I looked at life. And I said, well, you know, there's that old saying that you look at a glass and you wonder if it's half full. And um, there's the people that say, well, it's half full and it's half empty. I don't look at it that way. I think when I developed the spinning and brought spinning into St. Louis, and you know, it was a healthful activity. It was something that you could reach out to every age group, men, women. It didn't matter who you, what your backgrounds were. But that's basically what, what caused me to go into the foundation because spinning identified with breast cancer could care less who you are. You know, it's, the, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to affect everybody. But through spinning, I, I looked at people and I saw them in a whole different light. On a spinning bike, everybody was equal. It didn't matter where you came from. It just, you had a commonality, an experience, a connection. So all of a sudden, that glass didn't become half full and that glass didn't become half empty. That glass became another just drink of water. And then it dawned on me about 10 years after that revelation that it wasn't just a drink of water. That glass was completely full. That glass was water and air, and you need both of those to truly live.